Lesson 3 Capnography Waveforms. The objectives of this lesson are to identify and describe the following time based CO2 capnography waveforms normal, apnea, hypoventilation, hyperventilation, tachypnea with hypocarbia, bradypnea with hypercarbia, hypopnea with bradypnea. Rebreathing of CO2, partial airway obstruction, laryngospasm, lower airway obstruction, bronchospasm, asthma, emphysema, cardiac arrest with manual CPR, return of spontaneous circulation, and curare cleft. Normal waveform. With a normal waveform, respiratory rate may vary but it is generally between 12 and 20 breaths per minute for adults. The breathing pattern, or rhythm, is usually regular and occurs approximately once every three to five seconds. Under normal circumstances, inspired air contains virtually no carbon dioxide and expired air contains about four to 6% carbon dioxide. Because there is virtually no CO2 in the atmosphere, the baseline is normally at zero. Normal waveform phases. The capnography waveform shows four phases. Exhaled gas from conducting airways, a mixture of conducting airways and alveolar air, the alveolar plateau, and inspired air. In capnography, there are very few variations from a normal waveform. The waveform should return to baseline. The frequency should match the patient's respiratory rate, both spontaneous and mechanical, and the height of the waveform is usually between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury, which is the normal end tidal CO2 reading. Phase 1. During phase 1, gas is exhaled from the large conducting airways, which contain essentially no carbon dioxide. The exhalation cycle begins with air leaving the trachea, posterior pharynx, mouth, and nose. This is called dead space because no gas exchange occurs. Dead space is identified as the first upward deviation from baseline. Phase 2 In phase 2, the ascending phase, CO2 from the AVLE begins to reach the upper airway and mix with the dead space air. This causes a rapid rise in the amount of CO2, and it's now detected in exhaled air, and is identified as the gradual upslope of the horizontal line between the end of phase 1 and the beginning of inhalation, or phase three, the respiratory cycle. Phase three. During phase three, the carbon dioxide concentration curve remains relatively constant as primarily alveolar gas is exhaled, which is known as the alveolar plateau. Note that in the phase three capnogram, the alveolar plateau is flat with a slight upward tilt toward the end. The end of phase three is the end of exhalation. The end of the breath cycle contains the highest concentration of CO2, which is labeled the end tidal CO2. This is the number seen on the monitor. End of phase three shows the end of exhalation, the end tidal CO2. Phase zero. At phase zero, inhalation will begin. Oxygen fills the airway and CO2 levels drop back to zero. This is identified as the rapid descent at the end of the respiratory cycle. When inspiration does begin again, the amount of measured CO2 quickly drops to zero. The return to baseline is called phase zero. Normal waveform. Summary. To summarize the normal waveform, phase one of the capnogram represents the inspiratory phase of the respiratory cycle. Phase 2 shows the rise in CO2 as the dead space ventilation mixes with the alveolar gas. This part of ventilation involves the trachea, main stem bronchus, and airways. Phase 3 represents the alveolar plateau. This part of ventilation involves most alveolar gas. As shown, end tidal CO2 is measured at the end of expiration, just before inspiration. Finally, phase zero represents the end of the waveform segment. 
a rapid sharp downstroke indicating a drop in CO2 back to zero and the beginning of inspiration. Abnormal waveforms. Similar to the end tidal CO2 value, the capnography waveform provides important information about ventilation status. When the waveform deviates from normal, the clinician will be alerted to potential problems with the patient's ventilatory status. The shape of a capnogram is identical in all humans with healthy lungs. Any deviations in the carbon dioxide waveform must be investigated to determine a physiological or pathological cause of the abnormality. There are five characteristics of a capnogram that should be evaluated. Frequency, rhythm, height, baseline, and shape. If abnormal waveforms are indicated, the following steps are suggested. Check the patient's status. Check the patient's sampling line system to rule out any issues such as kinking. It's important to note that correct interpretation of the capnogram can only be achieved by comparison with other physiological parameters such as ECGHR, SpO2, blood pressure, temperature, and acid-base balance. Apnea. The standard definition of an apnea is no breath for 10 seconds or longer. Apneas may be central in nature with no respiratory effort or obstructive respiratory effort without air movement. Capnography alone does not provide apnea differentiation. There are many causes of apnea, but whatever the etiology, the patient is in respiratory arrest. Possible causes for apnea include cardiac arrest, respiratory arrest, equipment failure, displaced airway adjunct, or obstructive sleep apnea. Hypoventilation. Hypoventilation is defined as the buildup of carbon dioxide as a result of insufficient elimination of the byproduct. Respiratory rate may vary, but is often seen as decreased. Hypoventilation may result during normal respiratory rate, generally between 12 and 20 breaths per minute in an adult, slow respiratory rate, bradypnea, or insufficient tidal volume, hypopnea. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is normal with rapid increase in phase two, gradual, smooth, and possibly prolonged upslope, which is effort dependent during phase three, and an abrupt descent to baseline during inhalation. The hallmark sign of hypoventilation is a CO2 level elevated above 45 millimeters of mercury in the presence of normal perfusion, circulation, and metabolism. Possible causes for hypoventilation include a decrease in respiratory rate, decrease in tidal volume, chest compressions during CPR, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, or use of central nervous system depressant drugs. Hyperventilation Hyperventilation is defined as a low carbon dioxide level resulting from excessive elimination through rapid or deep breathing or from metabolic acidosis. Respiratory rate may vary, but is often seen as increased. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is normal with a rapid increase in phase two, gradual, smooth, and possibly shortened or peaked upslope during phase three and an abrupt descent to baseline during inhalation. The hallmark sign of hyperventilation is a decreased CO2 level below 35 millimeters of mercury in the presence of normal perfusion, circulation, and metabolism. Possible causes for hyperventilation include anxiety or panic disorder, excessive exercise beyond VO2 max, increase in respiratory rate, or increase in tidal volume. There are some special cases that shouldn't be confused with hypo or hyperventilation. We present them next. Tachypnea with hypocarbia. In tachypnea, abnormally rapid breathing, with hypocarbia, reduced CO2, respiratory rate may vary, but is generally rapid and above a rate of 20 breaths per minute. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular and occurs at least once every three seconds. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is normal with a rapid increase in phase two, gradual and smooth upslope during phase three, 
and an abrupt descent during phase zero, back to baseline during inhalation. End tidal CO2 levels are generally lower than normal. Possible causes for tachypnea with hypocarbia include pulmonary embolism, diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic non-ketotic coma, or pain. Bradypnea, abnormally slow breathing, with hypercarbia, increased CO2. Bradypnea with hypercarbia is a form of hypoventilation. Hypercarbia is defined as the presence of an abnormally high level of carbon dioxide in the circulating blood. During hypercarbia, respiratory rate may vary, but is generally slow and below a rate of 12 breaths per minute, representing bradypnea. On the capnogram, the increased levels of carbon dioxide being exhaled result in an enlarged waveform with a rapid increase in phase 2, gradual and smooth upslope during phase 3, and an abrupt descent during phase zero, back to baseline during inhalation. End tidal CO2 levels are generally elevated above normal. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular and occurs less often than once every five seconds. Common causes for bradypnea with hypercarbia include narcotic overdose, central nervous system depression, or heavy sedation. Hypopnea with bradypnea. Hypopnea, abnormally low respiratory rate, or shallow breathing, is considered less than 0.5 liters in an adult patient. Bradypnea, or low respiratory rate, may vary, but is generally less than 12 breaths per minute. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is abnormal with short non-plateauing waveform and slow respiratory rate. Often, this is followed by a higher concentration of CO2 when a deep breath is taken. This is often seen during procedural sedation or with use of opioids. Possible causes for hypopnea with bradypnea include narcotic overdose, central nervous system depression, heavy sedation, or stroke. Rebreathing of CO2 In rebreathing, respiratory rate may vary but is generally between 12 and 20 breaths per minute in an adult patient. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually normal and occurs approximately once every three to five seconds. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is normal with a rapid increase in phase two, gradual and smooth upslope during phase three, and an abrupt descent to baseline during inhalation. The characteristic pattern for rebreathing CO2 is an increase or rise in phase one or baseline. However, the end tidal CO2 value may also rise with each successive breath or remain the same due to hyperventilation. Some potential causes for rebreathing include air trapping in patients with a history of asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, rebreathing exhaled gas, known as the tent effect, or malfunction in the exhalation valve of the bag valve mask or ventilator. Partial airway obstruction, laryngospasm. Laryngospasm is the spasmodic closure of the larynx. Respiratory rate may vary, but is generally between 12 and 20 breaths per minute in the adult patient. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular and occurs approximately once every three to five seconds. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is normal with a rapid increase in phase two, gradual and smooth upslope during phase three, and an abrupt descent during phase zero back to baseline during inhalation. Although the waveform and values may appear normal, what is unusual in some but not all cases of partial airway obstruction is the presence of noisy respirations or inspiratory strider. The waveform becomes erratic as the changes occur in the airflow. As the obstruction progresses, the waveform will become progressively more dampened. When the patient is stimulated and takes a deep breath or the obstruction is removed, the waveform returns to increase in height as the retained CO2 is eliminated. Possible causes of partial airway obstruction include relaxation of the upper airway or secretions in the airway. Lower airway obstruction, bronchospasm.
In cases of lower airway obstruction resulting from bronchospasm, respiratory rate may vary, but is generally greater than 20 breaths per minute in the adult patient and is often accompanied by a reduced tidal volume. Additionally, wheezes or ronchi may be present. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular and occurs once every three seconds or less in the compromised patient. The typical shape or morphology of the capnogram is abnormal with a marked phase two to phase three curve with a shark fin appearance and an abrupt descent during phase zero back to baseline during inhalation. The shark fin is seen in more severe bronchospasm. Possible causes for lower airway obstruction, bronchospasm, include asthma, allergy, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, bronchitis, or pulmonary edema. Asthma, emphysema. With asthma, emphysema, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD, respiratory rate may vary, but is generally greater than 20 breaths per minute in an adult patient, often accompanied by a reduced tidal volume and wheezes or ronchi may be present. The breathing pattern or rhythm is usually regular and occurs once every three seconds or less in the compromised patient. The shape or morphology of the capnogram is abnormal, with a marked phase two to phase three curve with a shark fin appearance, and an abrupt descent during phase zero back to baseline during inhalation. The shark fin is seen in more severe bronchospasm. However, the loss of the alpha angle between the termination of phase two and the onset of phase three is the hallmark of bronchospasm. Cardiac arrest with manual CPR. Chest compressions are used when a patient's heart has stopped. The goal of chest compressions during CPR is to provide blood flow to the brain and vital organs, such as the heart and lungs. The rate and depth of chest compressions determines the perfusion or blood flow to the lungs, also known as pulmonary perfusion. Pulmonary perfusion determines the amount of CO2 that is delivered to the lungs for removal when the ventilation is provided. Monitoring capnography during CPR can alert the clinician that compressions are ineffective due to rescuer fatigue or technique. A decrease in the end tidal CO2 parameter and waveform trends can provide objective data indicating a need to reevaluate clinician technique. Return of spontaneous circulation. During CPR, a measurable amount of carbon dioxide is produced during the delivery of effective chest compressions. Manual compressions have been shown to deliver 20% of normal systemic blood flow when performed according to current American Heart Association guidelines for resuscitation. As such, CO2 values resulting from manual CPR are varied and production is markedly lower than normal. However, levels should remain consistent with effective compressions. During cardiorespiratory arrest, there is a massive systemic buildup of carbon dioxide. Return of spontaneous circulation results in a rapid and abrupt influx of CO2. Curare cleft. This capnogram is rarely seen. It occurs in mechanically ventilated patients who make an effort to breathe. With a feeble inspiratory effort, some fresh gas is sucked from the ventilator tubing and past the capnometer, generating this pattern. The depth of the curare cleft is proportional to the degree of muscle relaxants that the patient is on. Thank you for watching the presentation for Lesson 3, which identified and described normal and abnormal capnography waveforms.